this is the bad mamma jamma now i challenge you guys i'm challenging you i'm gonna give some of these away to give away we need a thousand likes so start by subscribing and liking this video if you guys get me a thousand likes on this video we're giving a set of these away for your build so hit the like button and comment down below gp hashtag gp and you'll be entered to win to get a set of these for your build let's get back to the video what's up everybody welcome back to the channel guys tiktok i had something on tiktok go viral i cannot believe it got over half a million views you guys and i was super blown away i guess and then i got a lot of questions Start applying heat to them and you see them starting to shrivel up but i don't know if you guys saw the title but the purpose of this video is to show you guys a little secret that i found out when i was in sema i don't know years ago probably three years ago now they've been out for even longer than that but let me show you what I'm talking about exactly. So I made this video, you guys, I was working on the 72 LS3 project and I made this little video on TikTok um, just talking to you about these rubber hose clamps slash thermoplastic. Now, I know you guys have seen them probably before. Some of you guys may not even seen them ever, but I discovered these years ago at SEMA and I always wondered what they were I, and it took me a long time to figure out what it is and what it was and who made them so long story short i'm here to give you guys the goods how to put them on how to remove them how they work half a million views i still can't believe it but if you see they just look so freaking clean on the radiator hoses um any coolant lines and things like that you guys can see down there we're running them down there in the heater as well the heater lines it just i mean just look at the engine it looks so freaking good so clean no hose clamps none of those ugly hose clamps and i got a lot of questions in regards let's let's matter of fact let's get down to the very first one i say the most one i saw was how much horsepower can they handle and if we think about it there's really not a horsepower number that you can sit there and say that this thing is going to hold up to because when in regards to horsepower, you guys, the temperature of the car doesn't really change. It doesn't really change unless obviously the elements change or your car is just running hot and it's just not staying cool. Your car is running at normal temp and staying within the boundaries. You should never have an issue with these clamps because these clamps want to say they're rated for about 40 to 50 psi and on a core they're probably running between what 15 and 20 if we're lucky so these things are going to hold up to at least 30 psi 30 to 40 psi no problem so this should never be an issue with horsepower you guys you got to remember though because like i said if this motor is running this hellcat is running and it's 700 horsepower stock right and but the cooling system and your gauge is saying oh, i don't know 180 210 maybe at most all the time then it doesn't matter what the horsepower of the car is so it should not matter on what the horsepower is whether it's 500 horse 700 horse 800 horse it's not going to matter you guys at the end of the day but i would say this a few things to take in consideration with these clamps is that you don't want to use them in application like for example um uh, like the Camaro, you know, or even our um, twin turbo Chevelle that we're going to be tracking. So if we're going to, you're going to track your car. If you know you're going to be working on your car all the time and you're just not going to just drive it, um, daily it, or even enjoy the car for what it is. If you're going to be pulling motor out, if you're going to be, um, I don't know, servicing it all the time. I mean, monthly, you don't want to go these because these are kind of they go on and they don't come off right like a regular traditional hose clamp or even like this style hose clamp where you just pinch it and remove it but these things are junk after a while same thing with the regular hose clamp these things just wore get worn and not to mention they damage the hose if you think about it it's just like pinching the hose down and it's at the end of the day this hose is going to be indented or even it can premature fail down the road 
But with this guy, what this is going to do, this is going to act and it's going to go over the entire hose and not to mention the surface it's going to go over. So if you think about it, you want a hose clamp. What is that? I don't know, a quarter of an inch riding and holding that hose on or you want a more than a half of an inch of actually clamping force. So these are called the Gates Power Grip, you guys. These are made from Gates. And Gates is a company that makes radiator hoses. That's all they do. They've been in the industry for years. So I really trust the product and I would not be selling you guys the product if I didn't trust it. I'm not even getting paid for this. So I'm telling you guys from my personal experience. And like I said, if these guys design hoses for a living, do you think they're not gonna design something that works? Not to mention this stuff right here was actually designed for one of the big, um, trailer companies not trailer companies but semis um they went on semis for a very long time um they used them because they used them across country across the world and what was happening is that they saw a lot of temperature drops and rises with their vehicles and their trucks and semis just driving freight and everything else like that so what makes these things so special you guys is the fact that they're made out of a thermal plastic so what that means, obviously, they're also heat shrink. So you have to apply heat in order to put these on. So once you apply heat, uh, these slip on, you apply heat and like a heat shrink, it just shrinks up and shrivels up. Right. So that's what's going to provide you the grip on that hose and also whatever you're plugging into, whether it's a radiator, a heater core, anything like that. So that's what's providing the grip once you heat this thing up. It's a thermal plastic. Now, when I was talking to you guys about the semis going across country, they also see super freezing cold temperatures. So once it, that temperature drops and gets below, what say, 40, 30 degrees freezing, right? These things, because they are made out of a thermal plastic, they actually shrivel up and they actually keep the host tight and secure so you don't have any leaks in the freezing cold temps as well. So think about it like a tire. It contracts like that rubber contracts. So it's actually going to get tighter also when it's cold out. I know it's hard. It, it's science, guys, and it doesn't really make sense. Right. But like you got to think about it. Heat, it'll get even tighter when the car comes up to temp. And in the cold, because of the thermal plastic, it's actually going to cinch down on it as well in freezing temperatures. It's crazy how it works, but it works, you guys. I will say this, is that they're not super, super serviceable. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. But if you put these on, put them on your daily, put them on your SEMA build, on your classic hot rod, they work on braided lines as well. They work on that on obviously your traditional style hoses you got to get them in different sizes they do come in different sizes and the way you uh the way they come is they come with this like hard plastic to kind of keep them intact and all you're going to do is crush the plastic like that crush the plastic like that and you should be able to slide the that cardboard out if i can do it with one hand let's see like that see so and then next step all you do is put it over the hose like that and then you're gonna put your hose on now you guys I'm doing this because I want to show you guys how they work right and this is end up gonna come off either way because this radiator in here is just in here for mock-up but I wasn't about to show you guys on that guy where the coolant's already full and I already bled the system I don't feel like taking that off so all you're going to do is slide that bad boy on there like so. Just like that. And then apply heat. Now, I got a lot of trolls talking smack because I use my handy dandy Dremel um, little torch guy here. And I use this thing a lot for heat shrink, for connectors, for stuff like this. Just because it's easy to get in tight places. I'll try to put uh, some links down in the description below if you guys are interested in one of these. But 
I know not a lot of people don't have these. And on, the biggest thing was, well, why do you have a flame next to an engine and this and that? There's no gas, guys. There's no gas leaks. This ain't your freaking mom's stove, okay? So relax. So I've used this quite a bit. Like I said, if you want to try it, go for it. If uh, this is just my disclosure, don't try this at home. Wink, wink. Now, the traditional way you can do is just a regular plain Jane heat gun. So we'll use the heat gun today. As a matter of fact, let's do it now. All you're gonna do is apply some heat and this thing will shrivel up and it'll start to take the shape of the hose and what's underneath it. You gotta apply an even amount of heat, you guys. All the way around as much as possible. Now I know there's going to be some obstacles, so do the best you can. And then any little spots that you can't get to for whatever reason, just remember when the car gets up to temp, it's also going to get hotter and it'll finish the job. But you'll know, you'll see the color kind of change. It'll kind of get shiny when this thing is nice and clamped down. I'm going to hit it from the bottom side real quick as well. You want to try to hit it at all the different angles as possible to make sure you get a nice good seal you want to use these in thought with what's around the car what's next to that hose and everything else like that because you don't want to apply heat and melt something so be be cautious with that so now apply some heat down below here So just like that, it's done. Now you do wanna let that sit for about 10 minutes. Let it cool for 10 minutes or so before you run the car and decide to take off or do whatever. Not to mention, these things are really handy if you think about it, like to seal a leak. If you have, like it'd be actually a good thing to have a couple of these in your car. If you ever have a leak in a hose or something like that, you can slide it over and it'll act almost as a, as rubber in a sense but we're gonna let that sit a little bit and i'm gonna show you guys how to take these off so as that guy sits and lets it cool down and let us do its thing like i said there's different sizes guys so make sure you guys get the right size for your hose you got a lot of different hoses and sizes i'll put a bunch of links down in the description below so where you guys can go get these and uh buy them bunch of amazon links you guys can find them nice and easy ship directly to you now, I will say this, they are somewhat costly. They average between, I don't know, between four and eight dollars a piece, I wanna say, but they're well worth it, especially if you guys are doing a nice build, a nice like classic uh, restore, resto mod, and you want a nice clean engine bay. They're well worth the money to me, and they work better to me, if you ask me, than a traditional hose clamp. All right, boys, so, I get a lot of questions. Next question was on TikTok there. Um, how do you take these things off, right? How do you take this off? How do you take it off? How are you going to get it off? I don't know how many questions. Over 100,000 probably of these questions. And the easy answer and the way I was doing it for a while there, I was just using just a good old traditional razor blade, knife, whatever you want to call it. You just want to make sure it's super sharp. Now... What do you, I know what you're thinking, Goose, you're going to cut the hose. I get what you're saying, but this is where you got to have a steady hand. You got to trust yourself and all that. And it's not the ideal way to do it, but it works. It can be done. So all you have to do is take your knife. You're not going to dig into it. No, you're not going to do it. And you're just going to slightly just kind of do this with some pressure. And you're going to start creating that, basically that line, that cut. And you're just going to keep working it, working it, working it until you basically cut through the entire clamp and not the hose. Like I said, that's a little bit slower, less traditional, and, and it's really a bit more nerve-wracking because you can cut the hose, especially somebody that doesn't really know what they're doing. Um, I know I probably did it the first time I tried it. 
cut the hose but after that i was just super careful you just gotta be patient and it is possible you guys so that's one way that's the first way to do it now the second way to do it is with the actual gates tool you guys the gates tool this is the bad mamma jamma now i only recently discovered that they had a tool for that so i was using just your traditional old razor blade style method for a while now and then when i found out about they actually have a tool to remove these i had to go pick one up like i said i'll go ahead and put a link down in the description below for one of these as well so you guys can get yours but must have must have if you're going to be doing these quite a bit or if you just have a really nice build that you want to just have it just in case you ever got to remove it. Now, how this works, it really just works just kind of like the razor blade does, but more controlled. You guys can see it. There's what it does. It just has a measured blade. So it just has a certain depth that it can only go down to. And what's going to happen is you're literally going to put the clamp in between those two jaws squeeze down and it's going to slice that thermoplastic right in half just like that so let's try it i'll show you guys so what this is going to do let's see if we can get you guys a good angle you're going to grab that section right there up top right and then grab the piece that's going to slide underneath the clamp try to get as much as you can underneath the clamp here make sure we got a good angle for you guys to watch this just like that and got one hand you guys okay so let's see if i can get that okay let's start now if i can do it with one hand look at that just like that you guys like butter not too shabby huh not too shabby like i said this thing is like a really thermal hard plastic but they work you guys i'm telling you they freaking work now the hose got a little bit of nick but that's just because i was trying to do it with one hand but nothing crazy you guys can see pretty good still so far and you can just remove that pop it right off and you can service it no problem but i literally just wasted a clamp for you guys but not a big deal but let me know what you guys think put it down in the comments below i was sitting there and made that video on tiktok trying to help you guys out and then i could not believe how many negative stuff came out about it but a lot of cool things also a lot of people also said they'd never seen them before ever but like i said i was trying to figure out this secret for years and where to get them how to get them and what they were but you guys check out the links down below get yours for your build and you guys already know hit the like button hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications and you guys already know stay wrenching